What's up, Blender Savages? So today we're going to use drivers to uh, animate this uh, car right here. They see me rolling, as you say. And they hate me. There we go. Alright. Won't be too hard. I promise. <clears throat> Alright, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to follow this handout here that I created for my students. If you are one of my students, you will get this handout for free. If uh, you're not one of my students, well, you can uh, check out the link in the description and you can... Uh, Get yourself a digital copy on a uh, Amazon Kindle Fire at uh, the price of uh, two ninety nine. All right, so let's go. So first, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start making uh, my little car here. I'm gonna make the model of the uh, uh, the car here with the cube. So I'm gonna scale the the cube here, uh, make it half the size along the z axis. Following these instructions here, S Z twenty five enter. There we go. You guys want to see what keys I hit. And then I'll make it a little bit longer. Along the y-axis, I'm going to make it uh, three times longer. S, Y, 3, Enter. There we go. So we got the main body there of the car. And then later, we'll make one of the tires. All right. So I'm going to take it to edit mode. And then I'm going to use loop cuts to uh, start making a cabin for my vehicle here. Three for right view. Let me zoom in. Tab key for edit mode. All right. And I'm going to hover over one of these uh, horizontal lines here. I'm going to hit Control R. That'll give me a yellow line right here. That's a loop cut. It actually uh, loops around the whole thing. Let me show you guys your control R. There it is. It could also uh, loop in the other direction. It just depends where your mouse cursor is at. It uh, You should put the mouse cursor in an edge that's perpendicular to the direction you want to move it into. You want to cut through. So I'm going to control R. I can use loop cut. Uh, I use it as two phases. So the first phase here, I can spin the wheel and I can add more cuts. Spin the middle mouse button. If you don't have a middle mouse button, you can hit plus or minus on your keyboard. And I can still go here to the side to do the same thing. But just one cut is good enough. So I'm going to click one time. All right. So there we go. So uh, I decided to just go to one cut, and I can move it around. And I want to position it right here, about one big blender unit from the, uh, the rear over there. So one of those big grid marks there. Just eyeball it. Left click right about there. See, so it's one square from the back. All right, so I'm at another one, and then I'm going to bring it in right here. And the reason I'm bringing these in because I want to create a face right here that I'm going to pull up for the cabin. Three for right view. So I'm going to two steps, control R. And the first time you control R, you can decide how many cuts you want and the direction. So I just want one cut going in this direction. Click one time. And then on the second one, you can slide it around. I'll put it right about there. Click. There we go. It's cool. So I'm going to switch over to face selection, and I'm going to select this face here. So up here I have my different selections, vertex selection, I click on vertex. Edge selection, I can click on edge there. And face selection, I can just select the whole face. There it is. All right. Now I'm going to pull this up. Actually, I'm going to extrude it up following these commands here. Bring it up by half a blender unit there, E, 0.5 in it. All right, so I already got the face here selected. Three for right view, number eight, so we can see what's going on. E, 0.5, there it goes. So brought it up by half a blender unit. Now we're going to scale it. We're going to scale it only along the Y axis oh, by 50%. So SY 0.5 enter. SY 0.5 enter. There we go. And now we can uh, scale it uh, along the X axis. So by uh, 80%. SX 0.8 enter. There we go. And now we're going to lean it back a bit so it doesn't look so weird. All right. Make it aerodynamic somewhat, right? So GY. And we're going to move it by 0.2 blender units. GY. Point to enter. There it goes. Cool. All right. So now I'm gonna give my car a name over in object mode. So there, I modeled my car there. Uh, if you guys are uh, a lot more talented at modeling, not more creative, you can uh, go ahead and add a bumper, add some lights, uh, some fenders, whatever you guys want to do. Tab key. There it goes. And now I'm gonna right click it. And in the contextual menu here, object context menu, you can go down here. Rename active object because right now it's called Q. And I'm going to name it uh, car, or you can name it driver car, something like that. This car is going to be the driver. It's going to be doing the driving car. There we go, enter, or car wadi, whatever. All right, so now I'm going to bring in a cube, and the cube is going to be my tire. And the reason I'm bringing in cubes is so you can see it spin. Where it's a If it's a cylinder, it's a little harder to see the spin. You have to uh, pay closer attention to it, but the cube will, be, will obviously be spinning. I guess it could be like a Flintstones car or something like that. Set for top view. I'm going to bring in a cube, Shift A. 
mesh cube. There's my cube there. See? And now I want to position it over here and, we, and scale it down. And I'm going to use these commands here. So first I'm going to scale it down by 50%, half its size. That's 0.5 in it. And now I'm going to move it up by two blender units. G, Y, 2 in it. And move it off to the side by two blender units right there on the X. G, X, 2 in it. There it goes. Cool. That's going to be my tire. And what I'm going to do here is create one tire and then get this one perfect. And then I'll just duplicate it all the way around so I don't have to uh, work on multiple tires. I can just work on one and then I get to duplicate it. The duplicates will have all the properties of this tire here. <clears throat> all right. And I want the tire to move, uh, uh, rotate along the x-axis while my car moves. So if my car moves forward or back, I want the um, the tires to move while the car moves up and along, up and down the y-axis. So that means the car here is going to be the driver, and the cube here is going to be driven. All right. So you want to do select the cube, and then you're going to go over here to the properties panel. Make sure you have this one active right here, object properties. Uh, it could be confusing because there's another one over here called object data properties. So this is object data, and this one's just object properties. Even though this one says properties too. I don't know who named these, but go with the yellow square right here. And here's the uh, transformations of the cube. Right here says location two and two for the X and Y. Remember, we moved it around earlier. That's what it's telling us right there. And if uh, anybody was looking over there while I was moving them, you would see those numbers change. And then here's a the scale. We brought it down by 50%, right? So 0.5. So what I want to do is uh, add a driver right here to the X, uh, rotation X. So that's what I want affected. I want the uh, I want it to rotate along the x-axis. So to do that, you just right-click it. So you get a contextual menu. There it is, add driver. Boom, you get this menu here. Uh, you might get excited, like, whoa, what is that? And you click over here, or you move your mouse, and it disappears. Don't worry, you can always uh, add another one or bring it back. If you want to know if something can be driven, if you can add a driver to it. If it has a dot right here, chances are it can, it can be driven. This dot's letting you know that it can be keyframe. See, there's keyframe, but we're not keyframing that. All right, so I'm going to right click it. And then if I lost the menu <clears throat> just now, you can just click on add driver. Afterwards, because um, it didn't really add the driver, and click out of there. Oh, that time it did. Let me right click it again. So uh, if it's purple, click on edit driver. There it is. If uh, edit driver is not available, it's because it wasn't added in there. So you just click add driver again, and then it goes in there. All right, so here you go. So you're going to choose the driving object. In this case, it's going to be the car, but I accidentally have the car selected right now. So let me not select it. All right, so let's remove that. Delete drivers. All right, so be aware of what object you have selected. So let's go back to the cube here. So first, you're going to select the object that's going to be driven, not the object that's going to be doing the driving. So select the object that's going to be driven, which is this. Uh, if you lose the menu, just right click it and select edit drivers. Edit driver, there we go. And you're gonna select the object that's gonna be doing the driving. In this case, it's gonna be the car. If the car moves um, along the y axis, then the x, the, sorry, the cube here will rotate along the x axis. So right click, edit driver. Now I'm gonna select the car right here. I already named it car, so there it is, car. And the type of transformation that I want is if it moves on the y axis. So right now, if it moves on the x axis, it'll trigger a rotation here on the x-axis for the cube, but I want the the car to move on the y-axis. There it is. So the y-axis is that green line there, forward, back. Let's try it out. Let's test it out, GY. There it is. Cool. See, so it's working. So if I move the car, the uh, tire there spins. And that's what we're looking for there. All right. Uh, but if you notice, when a car does move, the tire ro moves with it too, right? <laughs> It's actually the tire that's doing the, the driving when it comes to cars. But uh, let's fix that, all right? So what we're going to do, we're going to parent uh, the tire here to the car. So select the cube there. And then hold on, shift, and select the car last. So the order does matter because whatever you select last will be the dominant object when we create the uh, parent bomb here. So uh, the car there should have a yellow glow, and the cube there should have a red glow. If neither of these have any glows or they're both orange, you might have selected all or something like that. Make sure you don't select the lamp or the camera there. Definitely don't want to do that. So I'm going to click the cube there. Hold on shift and click the car. Just like that. All right. Now I'm going to hit control P. That'll bring up the parenting menu. There it is. And I'm going to go with keep transform. Just uh, in case there's any other changes there. There it is. Cool. So you see the little dotted line there. That's showing that there's a bomb. So now if I move the car, I'm going to select only the car. Because right now they're both selected. 
they're both going to move no matter what together. So you just got to click on the car there and test it out, GY. And there we go. It's cool. So it's following along there. And then also, if you mess up the bond, if it's not working, you can always uh, remove the bond. Uh, select the, your objects again and hit alternate P and it'll clear the bond there. I'll show you here. Alternate P. Sorry, you can't do alternate P here because it's actually um, it's a shortcut for the, uh, the video uh, recording software I'm using right now, the screen recording software. All right, but alternate P is the one that we remove the bond. All right, so we got another problem here. You see GY. So when the car moves forward, the tire is actually moving in the not the correct orientation, right? So when the car is moving forward, that uh, that cube there, the tire should move counterclockwise and not clockwise, right? But when I go in reverse. It goes counterclockwise, but it should be rotating clockwise. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. So we'll go back to the cube. And to fix this, we're just going to go back over here to the editor again the, for the driver, the driven object. So make sure the cube is selected there, your tire, rotation X. Right click inside the purple right there. Let us know that there's a driver, edit driver. And then we just have to change this to a negative. So you just want to click over here on the left side of it. I had to click there twice. And then minus. There it is. That's all you got to do. And then that's cool. I'm going to click on the car here again and GY. And there it is. If you did that and for some reason it's not working, let me click on the cube again. Right click in here and go to edit driver. Click on update dependencies and it'll update it just in case if they don't want to respect that minus that we added in there. So click on the car there. GY. And there we go. They see me riding. They hate. And all right. So, like I mentioned earlier, first we're just going to focus on. Fixing up one tire here, and then we can duplicate it to make all the other ones. So all the duplicates will have the same uh, driver set up there, and they'll also have the parenting bond there. So I'm going to duplicate this cube, and I'm going to bring it down so that it, um, so we get a front tire. All right, so I'm going to follow uh, these commands here, which will perfectly align my tires here. So I'm going to create my duplicate first, Shift D, and then move it along the Y axis by minus four blender units and enter. Check this out. Shift D Y minus four enter. There it goes. And I'm gonna do Shift D X minus four enter. So I'm gonna move it uh, minus four blender units in that direction. The duplicate Shift D. There it is. X minus four enter. There it is. And so this was minus four down. And so it's gonna be minus four up. So it's gonna be Shift D Y four enter. Shift D Y four enter. There it is. Cool. Check out my car here. Oops, I'll play the animation, but there's nothing to play. You actually have to uh, move the vehicle. There it is. Y axis. There it is. All right. Seems to be working there. <clears throat> All right. So you can see here, uh, depends on the car you want to make on your stance. So if you want a car here like, like this one where the, uh, the tires seem to be pretty high, you can leave it like that. Or if you like, you can uh, make a minor adjustment here. I'm going to hit GZ, 0.5 enter, and just bring it up a bit. Oops. It actually brought everything up because I had the dominance object selected. So I want to select the tires here. And I'm going to bring them down a bit. 3, GZ, minus 5. Oops. GZ, minus 0.5. Enter. There it is. But if you like the other look better, that's cool. Or maybe you really want a lifted car. So you can do something like that. Watch this. Yeah, however you guys want to make it. <clears throat> Whatever your preference is. You want to ride low. You want to ride high. It's up to you guys. I don't judge. <clears throat> All right, so we have our car there. And now let's start animating it. So I hit the play button here, nothing happened because there's nothing animated. So what you want to do is uh, select your driver right now. The, the car here is the driver. So we told it over here, it's the edit driver. And the car is doing the driving. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, the same properties over here on the duplicate as well. See, they're all purple there. All right, so I'm going to pull the car up along the y-axis. To, uh, and I'm going to keyframe that. So I'll go to frame one. Make sure you're on frame one in the timeline. Let's see here. Frame one. There I am. Frame one. Uh, if you just want to go to frame one, you just click down there or click this button here. It takes you to the first frame. I got my car selected. I'm going to bring it up by 20, 20 blender units. GY20. Enter. There it goes. And now uh, I'm going to keyframe that. Actually, I actually have another issue right here. Let me uh, go into that. So I'm going to render this so that we get the grid, just like this one right here. I want the grid to come out. But notice the vehicle here is on top of that Y axis there. And my vehicle here 
is inside of the y-axis. There it is. So I don't want it there. I want to pull it up. So I'm going to hit G, Z, 1.25, and there it is. Cool. So now it's above it. All right, and I'm at frame one, and I'm 20 blender units away from the origin. And I'm going to keyframe it at this current location, I key, and just select location. We're not doing any other changes. We're not rotating it. The tires are rotating, but it's only rotating because the uh, the driver here is making them rotate. All right, so here it is. I keyframe my uh, my first position. Now I'm going to go to the last frame. You can try clicking on 250, but it's just easier if you click this one here. There it goes. Cool. All right, and now I'm going to pull it up. Oh, how many blender units are we going up? Minus 50. So we're going to go minus 50 over here. So one, two, three, four, five. So it should end up over here. So GY minus five, zero. Enter. There it goes. And now we just got to keyframe that. I key location. All right. So let's check this out. Play button. And it's working. Man. They see me rolling. They hate. And I don't know if I'm allowed to see those songs. I don't want to get flagged or something. I think it's Universal Music Group. Owns those rights to uh, that song. I have to check with Chameleon there. All right, so I'm gonna go over here, one for front view. So just angle a little bit. I'm gonna choose a view for my camera here. Because right now my camera just sees this. Only sees a car for a moment. So he doesn't see the car yet. Hurry yet, hurry yet. There we go. So if I render this, majority of the video would not have a car present in it. So I'm gonna angle it so it looks like it's coming at you. So I'm gonna go for front view and do a view like this. I'm just holding down the middle mouse button to change my view. And then to make this user view the camera view, hold on control alternate and then zero on the number pad. Boom, there it is. There's my camera frame there. I'm hit the play button and see if the car stays uh, within the frame the whole time. And I got a feeling at the end it might be out of frame. Yep. All right, so if that's fine with you guys, you can leave it like that. But if you want to move the camera forward or back, click on the camera frame here. And you're going to do this. You're going to hit the G key, G for grab, so you can grab the camera. They hit Z two times. You have to hit it twice. If you hit it once, you go up and down. If you hit it a second time, you can zoom in and out. See? There we go. Right there. All right. Hit the play button. See if we get the car there in the whole frame now. Actually, I can just drag it over. It's probably faster. All right, cool. So it finishes there at the end. Maybe you still want it in frame. So to move it side to side, hit G and then X two times. Because the first time it snaps it to that X axis over there. But you hit X the second time. Snaps it to its own x-axis. You slide left and right. Click. There we go. Sorry. So play button. Cool. So in the first frame, it's back there. Uh, mainly, you have to be concerned about the first frame and the last frame in this case. In the last frame, it's in the shot there. Cool. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to render it so that it um, it renders with the grid here. So not the render viewport shader. If you go to render viewport shader. You're going to get this. Let me see. I'll render one frame and it's not look that cool. I don't even know if it's going to be visible. Yeah, it's barely even visible. And that's because of the uh, the lighting situation we have here. It's not much light. We go back to solid. And here in solid, I can see the grid. And uh, there's an option here to render it. So whatever, however you see it here, and you, in your user view, how you see it, in your shader, it'll render out like that. I can have it render like that. I can have it render with the wireframe or in the solid. Even the rendered one, but it's not going to come out good. So I'm going to go with this one because I have this cool little setup here. Uh, if your uh, shapes do not look like this, I'll show you how to make them like this. Make sure you're in the solid viewport shader. If your mesh objects are not uh, all colorful or have these uh, nice cavities here, uh, make sure in the solid viewport shader, click on this little uh, expander here, and then select mat cap, random, scroll down over here, activate cavity, and you're going to bring these all the way up. Just hold down the left mouse button and drag them over or just type in two. And that's it. This is this is a default right here. Like that. And, uh, let me bring this. Oh, turn it off. Yeah, see that looks kind of whack. So it looks a little neat if you go to Mac Cat and then random for random colors. And then where's my cavities? Cavity and bring them all the way up to two. There it is. Cool. All right, so I'm going to go over here to the render tab. Actually, no, not necessary. We're not uh, properly rendering this. I want to render it out as a, as a uh, MP4. That way I can upload it to almost any platform. MP4s are commonly used throughout the world. If it's MPEG. And then go down here, open up encoding. And Matroska, change it to MPEG4, and you'll get an MP4 file. And MP4s are virtually accepted almost everywhere. 
right? So most video players will play it. Most websites will allow you to upload an MP4. And you click the folder here, and you can choose a name and a location for the file. So I'll put in the desktop for now. Let's see. Rolling down the street in my uh, driver. There it is. Does it run with 64, but whatever. Accept. All right. And now instead of uh, going over here to render, render animations, so that's going to give me uh, this gray one, which I don't want. I want to go solid here. I want to keep the grid and all this stuff. I'm going to select. Sorry, I'm going to go to view. And right here, viewport render animation. You can render from the viewport right here, whatever you see right here. So we're going to render it so we have the grid. Viewport render animation. There it goes. And then you get these scary looking numbers. But don't worry, those are just the frames and it's animating there. And usually it's a lot faster than your standard rendering because it doesn't have to uh, account for so much information, so much more information like the lighting or shading. There we go. Almost at 250. There it is. It's done. All right. So let's check that out. All right. So there it is. There's my uh, my car. Got the grid and everything in the video file. And there it is. So you got the nice cubes. They're spinning and rotates again. And we got a nice little ease here. So the car uh, slowly starts to accelerate. And then it slows down at the end. So it looks a little more natural. It's not a constant speed all the way through. All right. And we even look, we even got the lamp here. Nice. All right. So thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Uh, please try to be kind to each other. And if uh, you want to support the channel or you want to see more stuff like this, give it a like, or give it a comment. And if, uh, if I help you out with something, please give me a comment. I really like those and a subscription. Those are awesome too. Thank you and have an awesome day. Bye.